Hello, hello, everybody. Like a lot of my videos lately, this one isn't designed to thrill or anything like that. I just want to show you guys what it's like when I'm um, working on projects. So I'm working on the Quasar UI Firebase project, and I thought I might as well do a stream. I do, sp I do plan on spending time doing, you know, more of the quote unquote cleaner videos, um, you know, which are more heavily edited and um, more precise to the point, etc. Uh, but since I am working on this Firebase project, I thought, you know, might as well do some streaming at the same time. And the reason I'm actually building this project in the first place is so that I can do a video that helps people get Quasar set up with Firebase. And I just felt like the tooling we had wasn't good enough. So it was worth spending the time building it myself. So let's jump into Quasar UI, Firebase, open that up in code. Now, one of the big things that I learned here is I've had a lot of trouble doing like yarn linking and trying to get everything sort of set up correctly one of the big sort of aha moments i had is that it, dealing with app extensions is so much easier with a mono repo and a mono repo basically means um at least in this case i'm using yarn workspaces so if i go to my package.json file here you'll notice that i've got workspaces this is a yarn thing i think other things like pnpm might support it or they have like little quirks their own ways of doing it um and this basically means that Anything in UI, this directory here, that's where I build my UI components. UI dev, that's where you test your UI components. App extension, that's for the app extension itself. And basically everything sits in these workspaces, which means they all end up in the same node modules directory. And it means you don't have to do any yarn linking or anything like that. And it basically means that if, um, if for example, I, I got, I've got this test app here. If I'm working on that test app, then if I go to package.json, this is the key, ready, um, to, to sort of everything here. So one of the dependencies here, where is it? It would be Quasar UI. Yeah, here we go. Quasar app extension Firebase is one of its dependencies, okay? Now, since this folder is included in my package.json workspace, app extension, right? And if I come in here, Notice that it's called Quasar App Extension Firebase. Okay, so I've got this um, project called Quasar App Extension Firebase. And now if I come into test app, that's the one I'm pointing to here. Now, since we're using workspaces, this is going to be automatically linked for us. That's the key, okay? So we end up with one set of node modules here. Everything links back to these node modules, right? And so if I click on node modules there, and I come down and I find that one, uh, where is it? It's called Quasar. Here we go. Quasar App Extension Firebase. Notice that little link symbol? That's because it's linking to that actual folder here. All right. To put that simply, and I promise I'm going to stop going on about this. To put that simply, whenever I include this package here, it goes straight to this directory rather than getting it from the web meaning everything is in sync. And it's so much easier to develop this way rather than using yarn link. I hate using yarn link, things always go wrong. So anyway, big takeaway there. The Actually, the other big takeaway I had, I might as well mention this for those of you that wanna build an app extension, is that sometimes you have, um, you're using things that need to be global. And by global, I mean, I'll give you an example of that. Where's Firebase? So I want to be able to use Firebase globally. In other words, if I have it in one package um, and then I use it somewhere else, for example, in my app, I want it to be pointing to the same version of Firebase, right? I always want to use the same version of Firebase. So in order to do that, what I had to do is go into UI, I jump into my build process. I can't remember which of these it is. It was in maybe this one here. Oh, here we go. And I basically had to specify the external dependencies. So by default, we had view and quasar set up. So that basically means that whenever I say, for example, um, import view um, from view, or it wouldn't be view, it would be like this, right? That means because this is happening here, this, this is set as external, that it's always going to be pointing to the same version of view, right? Um, and it also means that it's considered a peer dependency. So I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Anyway, I need to do a bit more digging on this, but um, that's very, that's key because I had to add Firebase here. Otherwise I would have all these different versions of Firebase and they'd fall out of sync and I couldn't use provide and inject um, properly and all that jazz. So 
Anyway, that was a disaster that I was able to fix um, by setting that as an external dependency. All right, so let's go back to developing now. I had a list of things to do. I should order this as well. Enabling slash disabling auto mode. All right, so I'm gonna put that at the bottom here. So by default, I'm making it do most of the work for, I'm doing most of the work for you when you set up Firebase. Um, I'm even creating a login and a register page, and I wanna make it so that you can actually disable that. And that's what I'm talking about there. Uh, the other thing is custom route redirects. All right, so I wanna make it so that you can set your own route redirects. So for example, if you have a landing page, I want you to be able to say, if you go to this landing page and they're authenticated, then send them to the app instead. Okay, so you, you can actually handle stuff like that. Now, the other one is change redirect composables so that it needs to be called. All right, so this is this is the basically for the core package that it relies on. So I'm gonna have to do that first. And let's go ahead and get started. So basically, um, you know what, I'm just going to work on this. It's kind of too hard to explain exactly what I need to do here. So I'll explain it through example. So now we're going to CD into, oh, let's just open another terminal here, Firebase-Composables, open that and code. All right, oh, everything's in TypeScript now, so I need to make sure I'm typing everything correctly. Uh, and I'm very new to TypeScript. So we've got redirect if authenticated and basically what I want to do here is make it so that it doesn't just redirect straight away you actually have to tell it to redirect so we'll have a function that is called redirect that seems like an appropriate name or maybe run or check or handle or something like that maybe execute exec is what I've seen um, them use on Axios before so I might just use that there Exec. So redirective or thing. And I might change the name of this as well to something like um, now that it's kind of a composable. Um, use authenticated redirector. So that's probably a better name for this. It kind of implies that this is something that gives you something back that you can use to redirect the user if they're authenticated. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. All right, so for checking, oh, now I need to figure out, I had, to, I had some pretty complex logic here. All right, so basically we need to pull this logic here for router.push out. All right, and we need to remove that and maybe we could have something here, like an option that allows you to say, check on run or something like that. So basically the moment you use this composable, um, run execute. Um, so how about this? Uh, execute um, on initialize maybe. Uh, Execute on, yeah, that's probably a good name. I think a lot about names, which is why these um, naming things, which is probably why this is gonna be a little bit more boring than other videos. So, run on a knit. Run, yeah, I call it that, run on a knit is equal to, we'll set that to false by default, but then you can set it to true. You basically wanna run this straight away. And then we'll come down here and we'll say, if run on a knit, then I want you to run execute. Okay, so what's execute gonna do? We've got get auth here, so maybe we should just get auth from the beginning. So we'll come up here and we'll say, const auth is equal to get auth, might as well. And then we'll say auth dot, so this is checking for the auth state change. So we only wanna do that if we're basically running this on a knit.
I know, because if, if it's a net, we just run it there anyway. Okay, so basically I want to take this code here, grab that, and say on auth state changed. Uh, so I can probably get rid of that there. And then for on checked, that's going to be null by default. No, okay, so that's the one that's a function. So every time we execute this, Oh, hang on. Yeah, okay, so this on off state changed only gets called if we're running it straight away. All right, so the handler actually is not wrapped in that then. And we'll basically have to take out the user from use auth state. Is authenticated. You can also pull the user out of there. And now I should be able to say user dot value to send through the user. Okay, so you can basically say run on a net, which is going to it's not going to execute that straight away. It's going to say on auth state changed. Man, this logic sucks. Then we take in the user and we need to call this something different now. We've got a clash here. Um, Let's just call it auth user. And then, so essentially we kind of want to do the same thing. Mm, but it takes in the user, oh, bugger. So I might cancel the stream because I feel like I need to do a lot of thinking in this and it's not going to be interesting at all. Um, I, I need to make sure that this logic is really sound and I'm kind of compl complicated, or at least it is for me. Let me say this out loud. So if they want it to run straight away. We basically wait for that for the auth state to change. So this is something that you would run um, before you've attempted to get an authenticated user. And then we execute, and if we want, I guess we could say, it's got the option of accepting an authenticated user, like so. Otherwise, null. And you know what, for now, let's just look at the possibility of just writing out this logic twice. So what happens if I just copy that? And just paste it in there rather than doing an execute. and see what's different. Okay, if it's a function, obviously we need to run the unchecked part there. If they are authenticated, then we do the router push to the path. Yeah, okay, so that all makes sense. Now, what about if I execute it on its own? Let's check if this still makes sense. We basically check, we run the function because we've just checked. Um, if they are authenticated, then we do the router push and we do have is authenticated sitting there. Yeah, the only reason I need to do this state change is for the initial 
check, basically, if you want to do that initial check. Um, because you kind of have to wait on that initial check to know. Uh, if, because if you run it straight away, then it might not have run that check yet, which is what makes this so complicated. Um, so we've got, I mean, there's a, there's a bit of, you know, there's a bit of duplication here, but what's my alternative? And what does that auth user look like, by the way? On auth state changed. How do we get back here? Do I actually get a user back there? All right, so maybe this is going to work now. I think I just need to have a little play around with it and see how it goes. Yeah, man, I need to stop this stream. This is going to be um, pretty boring, I'm predicting. So we'll run a build there. Um, and then we'll CD into that test. Uh, no, I called it examples in this project. Examples, and then we'll run yarn dev. Now there's something it doesn't like. That's right, we changed the name of this. Use authenticated redirector. So I'm gonna copy that, and then I'm just gonna find in this folder, redirect if authenticated. Oh, we need to change the name there as well. And I just need to change this everywhere that I need to. So obviously in the import, we'll paste that in. Oh, this is meant to be redirect if unauthenticated. So we'll fix it for unauthenticated in a second as well. Let's try running that build again. All right, hopefully this goes well. Good, that's built it. And now, I'm going to open up my server and it's going to need a change as well. So test app uh, is going to need, well, there's going to be a place in there where we're using the wrong version of it. So find in folder, redirect if or where is it? Okay, maybe I did change it in there. No, oh, hang on. Oh, it's on the com oh, I'm in the wrong bloody project. Ugh. Bull. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's embarrassing. All right, redirect if uh if authenticated. So now we need to change the thing that uses it. Uh, now it's gonna want me to change the language as well because I converted this to TypeScript recently. All right, I'm gonna stop this stream. This is gonna be way too boring. Uh, if anybody got this far, then <laughs> I apologize.